Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Grand Theft Auto style game in Unity and welcome to episode 28. In this tutorial we're going to go a little bit further with our NPC and we're going to enable something called, well we're going to call it Flea Mode. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well. Stay up to date with every tutorial, still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So. How are we going to do this? To make him flee, I mean. Well, it's actually a lot simpler than what you would think. So up until this point, we've got him, as soon as we're aiming, well, you already know because you saw the last tutorial, so he'll kind of run off. So what we need to do now is make it so as he will go to, gosh, let's say somewhere else, somewhere over here. So we're going to assume somewhere maybe here. So we're going to set up a flee destination to run over here. So he breaks from his casual routine to run over here and then when he's had enough he thinks yep yeah, I'm safe he'll carry on with his normal routine. So to do that we are going to go to our NPC and we're going to go into our NPC AI script right here. So let's open that up if um, I actually click the right thing the NPC AI script so we're going to modify this script in a couple of ways. So firstly, we are going to set up a new uh, variable and it's going to be a bool. That bool is going to be what we're going to refer to as flea mode. So public, and it's also going to be static because we need to control it from uh, another script. So public static bool flea mode. By default, it will be false. Obviously, it's going to be false because we want him to be able to walk around normally. It's only when we've aimed our gun that we want him to scream and then get a little bit angry and run away. Well, I'll say angry, more scared. So where do we go from here? So ultimately, what we need to do is in void update, we need to say if flea mode equals false, then that's just going to be the standard thing to do, which is our normal destination point. Our next destination point is going to be somewhere else. So what we'll do is we will insert a destination point over here. So game object, 3D object, cube. I always use cubes because they're easy to find. Uh, let's bring it down to the ground a little so it's not high up in the sky. And Let's bring it all the way over here. Uh, probably a little bit further. Let's say just there. <clears throat> so I'm going to rename this to NPC001 flea dest. I'm going to turn off mesh renderer. And I think we'll also turn off box collider because we're not going to be using it, to be honest. No, at least not yet. So let's bring this object up here and in line with NPC001. So we need to declare that as a variable in our NPC AI script. So public game object flea dest semicolon. So I'm hoping by now you've probably realized what we're going to do here. We're actually going to have an else statement to say if flea mode isn't equal to false, i.e. it is equal to true, then we need to say this line of code. So we're saying the agent dot set destination point and it is or rather set destination and it is not going to be destination point. It is going to be flee dest and save that script. So what's happening here is as soon as we change flee mode to true, it means that instead of going to its normal destination, Malcolm is going to run to this destination. Now there's a couple of other things we need to do as well. We actually need to enable um, flea mode from the other script. So when we start aiming our weapon, we need flea mode to be activated from there. So on aiming distance, let's go into the NPC alerted script. And where we've got um, play animation of running, play the uh, change the speed to 7.5, we need to say NPC dot get component and in spiky brackets in fact you know what no we don't we don't actually need to do that now we think about it we can just say npc ai dot 
I can check which one it is. Flea Dest. Or rather, flea mode, I should say. Equals true. Semicolon. And save that script. So now what's going to happen is when we aim at Malcolm, he is going to start running off. But we also want him to maybe shout a little something. Ah, help me. I do have an audio clip for that. So I'm going to add that to NPC001. So right click and let's create empty. And on here, I'm just going to have this as help me uh, FX. And I want to drag and drop into Unity a little audio clip in the FX folder. And you can get this on the website if you head over there, downloads and assets, onto GTA series and number 28. And it is male help, so let's add that to here. And let's also turn off play on awake, and I think um, we should be okay as it is. So let's head back to our script for NPC AI, and let's add that variable in now. So public audio source, and that is going to be, um, we'll just have help me fx semicolon. So this is where it starts getting a little bit interesting. So we now need to basically allow ourselves to uh, play the sound effect once and then kind of revert to our normal routine after let's say six or seven seconds just as a starting test point. So for that we are actually going to need to write a coroutine. This is all still in the NPC AI script. So we are going to say I enumerator and we'll call this fleeing NPC, open close bracket, open curly bracket. Now at the same time, we also need to have another bool in here because we need to make sure that we only trigger this once and it doesn't cycle itself repeatedly. So let's have public bool is fleeing, semicolon. Uh, actually, by default, we'll make that false, semicolon. So in void update, what we need to do is here where we have uh, all of this, I'm actually going to add in another variable, uh, another line of code, I should say, an if statement to say, are we already fleeing? So if... And in brackets, is fleeing equals true. Uh, hang on, let, let me quickly think about this. So are we fleeing? So we are going to want to have it inside the else statement. My apologies. I've, I just realized then we do have that else statement there. So it's going to need to be in there. So if is fleeing equals false, then first things first, turn is fleeing on equals true. At the same time, we now need to activate the um, coroutine down here, which is the fleeing NPC. So start coroutine and in brackets, fleeing NPC, open close bracket, close bracket and semicolon. That now means that we are down here with the code and it also means that we can play help me effects. So help me effects dot play, up close bracket, semicolon. So that's now playing. So what we need to do now is we need to make it so as after, like I say, six or seven seconds, our NPC reverts back to his standard routine. So let's think about this logically. It's all about sequence of events and how you organize your script. Sometimes AI can be incredibly confusing, but it's only confusing if you make it confusing. So at this point, what have we done? We have said, yes, we've pulled a gun. Yes, our enemy, uh, sorry, our NPC is running. And yes, he is running to this destination. So what we need to do is say, yield, return, new, wait for seconds. And I'm just going to say, um, let's say seven seconds. After seven seconds, let's set flea mode as false so as he returns to his normal route or route however you want to pronounce it 
And at the same time, let's also set is fleeing as false as well and save the script. So what we've done here is we have allowed this script of when we aim our weapon and the NPC enters, we have allowed that script to interact with the actual AI for this NPC. And then it changes his routine to instead of walking around this block to running away somewhere else, obviously running away from uh, the gun that's being pointed at him. So what we need to do now is we now need to set that flea destination, which is that cube that we set up before and the help me sound effect. So let's add that into there as well. I'm going to save my scene and I am now going to test this out. So let's press play and hopefully this should work first time. I am expecting a bug or two to occur. <laughs> it's just the way it goes during development. So let's go pick up our gun. And then we'll find, try and find Malcolm. Okay, so Malcolm is walking there, that's all good. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna go around this way. And I'm gonna cut him off around the other side of the block. Oh, our other NPCs having a bit of trouble there. We'll sort that bug out sometime. Where is Malcolm? He's taking his sweet time, isn't he? Here he is. So hopefully when I aim this gun at him, he is not going to carry on walking down this road here because that is, is his current uh, trajectory. He will kind of run off towards that way. Fingers crossed. So, Malcolm, are you ready to have this pistol pointed at your face? Hello, Malcolm. Ah! Help! There we go. So he's running off now. He shouted, ah, help, and now he's running off. And what is happening now is he will return to his normal uh, route. However, his animation is not quite reset. I think I kind of expected that to happen. Yeah, so what that essentially means is that we now need to, uh, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand that. I'm going to make that more 13 seconds. And after that 13 seconds, we need to reset his uh, stats. So NPC alerted, remember these here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy those two lines of code and I am going to place them inside the NPC AI script below here. Now these aren't going to quite work as intended. However, we do need to work with this game object. So what we can do is we can reset everything here. Now speed is 2.5. So let's set 2.5 and his standard animation is, um, if I can remember what it's called, um, it is walking. So we just need to change that there. And instead of NPC, all we did say is this dot game object dot get component and same with this one. This dot game object dot get component nav mesh and basically we've reset everything there. So one final test. I said one final test. There we go, Unity. So this should work as intended. We know it all works up to the point where he tries to run off. That's good. That works. We just need to make sure that when he's ready to reset, that he does indeed walk again and he doesn't um, you know, look a bit silly. So let's try. There we go. So he's running off because we've aimed our weapon at him. He's still running off. And he's decided, nope, it's okay. There we go. And he's walking back to his normal routine. Now, let's try aiming a weapon at him once again. Because 
as we can. Hey, Malcolm. Hey. There we go. And perfect. So our NPCs now have the ability to recognize that we are aiming a weapon at them and they are going to react accordingly. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to apply that same logic to our other NPC. And I think we're going to start looking at shooting them as well. We're going to start um, creating the AI, which allows us to fire and then the NPC themselves would, you know, one shot down on the floor kind of thing. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.